This is honestly messed up. Eight of the fake electors in Georgia have been granted immunity in order to testify or speak against Donald Trump. This just in to CNN. Prosecutors in Fulton County, Georgia, have granted immunity to at least eight fake electors in their probe of Donald Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election. Let's get details from CNN's Sarah Murray. Sarah, what can you tell us? Well, Wolf, Wolf, we're learning this from a new court filing that eight of the 16 Republican fake electors, at least eight, have accepted immunity deals from District Attorney Fonnie Willis as part of her sprawling investigation into efforts to overturn the 2020 election in the state of Georgia. Now, this is... So these people attempt to destroy democracy and they get protections just because they give up some information. How does that like any real kind of justice. Significant because they are relatively recent cooperators as of April, according to these court filings. And earlier in this investigation, the district attorney had said all 16 of these fake electors were targets as part of her probe. She made it clear she was investigating this fake elector scheme, you know, putting forward these fake slates of electors to try to block uh, the certification of the 2020 presidential election results. So now she's got a handful of new cooperators on her hands. This is part of the reason that we have been told you know we saw this delay or rather an extension in when she's actually going to bring these charges she recently informed law enforcement she was likely to make an announcement on who if anyone she would charge between july and september of this year previously we had heard it could be a little bit earlier than that but look they're going to be getting information from these cooperators they're going to be sifting over that and trying to decide who if anyone to bring charges against in this case and the district attorney had previously said that some of these fake electors were beginning to turn on each other were beginning to to incriminate each other an attorney who represents these eight who have accepted immunity Th that's funny that they were turning on each other they were all getting really worried about getting screwed uh, that is you know, that is the reason why the eight took the immunity uh, bargain because they knew if they didn't they would get screwed. Deals insist they're not turning on each other. They're not offering incriminating evidence, but obviously they have something that the district attorney wants enough to offer them these immunity deals, Wolf. Yep, good point. Sarah Murray, stand by. I also want to bring in our senior legal analyst, Ellie Honig. Uh, Ellie, what does it mean practically for these fake electors to now be granted immunity? Right, well, so immunity is a powerful tool that prosecutors can use to get at testimony from people who may have been involved in a crime. There's really three steps. First, the prosecutor issues a subpoena or requests testimony. Then the recipient of that claims the Fifth Amendment, says, I'm not going to testify because it might incriminate me. And then the counter move by prosecutors is to say, OK, we're not going to use your testimony against you. You're immunized. And now you have to testify because you no longer have a Fifth Amendment right. So, Sarah. Oh, so is that why they grant immunity to people to nullify the Fifth Amendment? That's that's crazy, but it it just gives these people the ability to just walk away scot free from their crimes. How does this fit into the broader investigation in Georgia? Well, look, the fake elector probe is one part of what she's looking at. And obviously, she's going to want to know from these folks, you know, what interaction they may have had with higher levels of the Trump campaign about sort of the organization of this plot. But they're also looking at, you know, false testimony given in front of Republican lawmakers or given in front of lawmakers in the state of Georgia by people like Rudy Giuliani. They're looking at uh, unauthorized access to voting machines, uh, to election machines uh, in one rural county in Georgia. And again, of course, they're looking at this phone call that Donald Trump made to Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, as well as calls Trump made to other Georgia officials trying to pressure them to overturn the election. Yeah, Trump was on record asking people to find a certain number of votes in Georgia, which would allow him to win. Ellie, does this tell you anything about the prosecutor's strategy right now and what type of charges potentially the former president, Trump, could potentially face? Well, Wolf, it tells me the prosecutors are trying to climb the ladder here. They're trying to use the testimony of these eight fake electors, A, to implicate the other fake electors, but also I think you want to move up the chain of command here. The main question I would have for these folks that they now have to answer is, 
who came up with this idea and who coordinated it. Mm -hmm. And now as to potential charges, as Sarah laid out, there are charges under the Georgia Code for attempting to interfere with an election. But we've also had previous reporting at CNN that prosecutors are looking at potential conspiracy charges, which means one or more people, two or more people who come to an agreement to commit a crime or even, according to our reporting, racketeering charges, which would mean some organized group working together to commit a series of crimes. And that's consistent with Sarah's reporting just now.